So turn with me to the book of Matthew, the 26th chapter, starting at verse number 56. I welcome all those that are online uh, watching the service tonight. We give God the glory for you as well. We pray that you turn to the book of Matthew, the 26th chapter, reading from the New Living Translation, starting at verse number 56. When you have it, please say amen. amen. And the word of God reads, but this all happened to fulfill the words of the prophets as recorded in the scriptures. At that point, all the disciples deserted him and fled. Then the people who had arrested Jesus led him to the home of Caiaphas, the high priest, where the teachers of, the religious, teachers of religious law and the elders had gathered. Meanwhile, Peter followed him at a distance and came to the high priest's courtyard. He went in and sat with the guards and waited to see how it all would end. Now jump over to verse 69, same chapter. Meanwhile, Peter was sitting outside in the courtyard. A servant girl came over and said to him, you are one of those. Hmm with Jesus, the Galilean. But Peter denied it in front of everyone. I don't know what you're talking about, he said. <laughs> Verse 71 says, later, I mean, later out by the gate, another servant girl noticed and said to those standing around, this man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, Peter denied it. This time with an oath, I don't even know the man. My God. He said, a little later, some of the other bystanders came over to Peter and said, you must be one of them. We can tell by your Galilean incense. Peter swore, verse 74, a curse on me, he said, <laughs> if I'm lying. I don't know the man. Lord, I just pray for the people of God to be open to receive impartation mixed with principles. Lord, we thank you, Father God, that you are about to love on us, correct us, and build us to advance your kingdom. Save somebody's soul. Reclaim somebody all the way back into the kingdom. We thank you that your kingdom shall come in your will shall be done. Lord, while we're standing, Father God, strengthen the believers as we wage war against the flesh, the world, as well as the devil. We thank you that we are victorious. We thank you, Father God, that every stumble, every mistake can all work together for the good. We thank you, Lord, that you loved us enough, Father God, that you didn't allow us to die in our mess. You have given us one more opportunity, Father God, to get it right tonight. And so, Father God, as we approach your living word, we ask, Father God, that you burn away everything and anything, Father God, that would keep us from being fully submitted and committed, Lord, to your covenant. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Come on and say amen, everyone. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the holy God. I thought this was interesting when I was up here studying today, and so I'm going to read this. It says, one day, one day, look at your name and say one day. One day as a woman was crossing a street at London Station, an old man stopped her. He said to her, excuse me, ma'am, but I want, to, I want to thank you. She looked up and exclaimed, thank me. She was kind of surprised. Mm. He replied, yes, ma'am, I used to be a ticket collector. And whenever you went by, you always gave me a cheerful smile and a good morning. I knew that smile must come from inside of you somewhere. Then one morning I saw a little Bible in your hand. So I bought one too. And I found out about Jesus mm -hmm, from that Bible. That man, church, saw something in that woman that touched his heart. What did he see? 
He saw Jesus living in and through that woman and that woman's life. In, the kingdom of heaven, the word of God says, is within. And then he also witnessed, my God, that what lives on the inside begin to manifest itself on the outside. So it's one thing for the kingdom of heaven to live within. It's another thing for it to show up. Mm. Oh, my God, in your everyday life. Come on, somebody. On the outside. Mm. Each one of us should live, my God, so that we will, so that the world can see Jesus in our lives. In this scripture, Jesus has been arrested and taken to the home of the high priest. Simon Peter follows him at a distance, just like some of us, and ends up outside the house. Don't end up on the outside because you're falling from a distance. Don't end up on the outer court when you should be in the holiness of holiness because you're falling from a distance. Uh, don't end up somewhere, my God, that you ain't supposed to be because you're falling, God, from a distance. You're telling yourself it don't take that. I don't have to show up no more. I don't have to be consistent, my God. I done been through the vision. I don't need to go back to the class. Be careful, my God, that you don't find yourself drifting away from God when you used to be up close and now you're falling back, my God, and now you're getting ready to be picked off because in the jungle world, my God, the animals look for that one that has failed. To the back. Uh -huh. And some of you, my God, you may be sitting, I love you, but you're following from a distance. Uh -huh. And I know come Sunday morning at 9 o'clock, my God, to those that's supposed to be in covenant, my God, with the house of the Lord. But Peter got caught slipping, everybody, because he began to follow God from a distance. My God, you was up close at, one at once upon a time, but are you following from a distance now? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, somebody give God a hand. Y'all know I'm coming. Y'all know I'm coming. I'm looking at you. Oh, my God, I know the Spirit of God has struck your conscience. Again, you got to ask yourself, am I following God from a distance? I'm going to show you the danger of following God according to your will and not his will. There's a way that seems right to you and I that leads to death. It may seem right to you, may feel right to you, may even look good and sound good, but that don't mean it's life. And that don't mean it's his will. Because we can convince ourselves that we're in his will and not be in his will. Am I talking to the right crowd tonight? Mm, so Peter followed him from a distance. He ended up outside sitting by the Roman fire. Following from a distance, he ended up sitting by the enemy. The very people that said crucify him. Oh, because he started following uh, at a distance. Now you listen to me, Minister Henry. My God. Sitting amongst the people. The true man, the guy, the rock that the church is built on, is sitting with the enemy because he made a decision to follow from a distance because he couldn't endure the persecution that was coming to his leader. Oh, people are following you until they see what you got to go through. Come on, woman of God. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Mm. When they see the price that got to be paid, they start backing up on you. They start doing the James Brown on you, my God, because they don't want to be identified with the suffering. Uh, he cursed that I never even knew the man. But that's not the moral of the story, though. Mm. Are you with me so far? Mm. So he's sitting by the fire. That night, my God, he was warming himself. We're getting ready to experience one of Peter's greatest failure, but the story don't end there. Uh, he had been put in a position where his light, church, could have shined brightly. His witness, my God, could have reigned for generations. Come on, somebody. But his witness and his light was invisible at this moment. But how many know that's not the end of the story? I can't get nobody to say nothing right now. No one was able to see Jesus at this time through the man of God. Peter was a saved man, though, falling from a distance. He was born again, falling from a distance. He was living a new life, but he was following from a distance. How many know, but on that night, you couldn't tell that he was saved. You couldn't tell that he had been with Jesus because he made a decision, my God, to disassociate himself with his father. The dangers. I thank God I ain't never done that to Bishop. Just tried to disassociate myself first with my heavenly father, Jesus, and then also my natural, my God, spiritual father, Bishop Gary McIntosh. It's been great benefits, my God, to stay identified with the spiritual covering of my life as well as this church. So the title of this message is, Is There Any Evidence in Your Life That You Have Been With Jesus? Whew. Is there any evidence? Say loud right there. You don't want nobody to know. You want people to know when it's convenient for you. But if it's going to put you on the outside, you don't want nobody to know. If you're going to be persecuted, 
because of your identification, you don't want nobody to know. If you're not going to be popular no more, you don't want nobody to know. Come on, somebody. So point number one, let's look at this. Let's look at this. Look at this. Let's put up point number one. Let's talk about the transformation in Peter's life. Simon Peter was not the man he used to be. Mm. He had been transformed. Now, I want to teach you about the word transform. I learned this many, many years ago, but the, trans, the word transform is a two-part word. Trans, that means cross over. Listen to me, y'all. Trans. Peter has been trans, crossed over, prefects, crossed over, and then formed. And see, in order for God to form you, you got to allow God to cross you over. Oh, my God, going off for Christ church. And see, we, many of us want to cross over, but we're not allowing the prefects of the trans. Trans, I mean, my God, 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 make me over. Make my mind over, God. Remove all the stones out of the way, my God. Remove all the barriers. I taught y'all Sunday. Remove all the stuff out of the way that will cause me, I mean, cause me from being formed into your image. Transform. See, you're going to learn that in Discipleship 1, when you get through disciple, uh, 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 Kingdom Foundation, that you got to be transformed. you got to be trans, crossed over, and then formed. Have you really crossed over so that God can form you? Ask yourself that question. And so Peter, my God, had been transformed. Peter had been crossed over. Peter was a saved man. Come on, somebody. And God began to form Peter by the power of the Lord Jesus. So write this down up on the point number one. Let's look at Peter's past. Uh, anybody got a past other than Pastor Peoples in this church? Mm -hmm. If anybody got things that they, they don't want nobody to know nothing about. If anybody been through some stuff, my God, that they not... Uh, they wish God would have did like I taught y'all son and turned his back on it, but instead he exposed it. I can't get nobody. Uh, see, some things he'll turn on, and some things he's going to rip you and expose you. I can't. I don't want to mess with you. I feel good. Peter, though. Peter, Peter, Peter. Peter was a fisherman. Mm. Boy, I feel good. Can you tell Pastor Champ? Peter was a fisherman. Fishermen in the scripture days, y'all, mm, they were notorious for their vulgar ways and their wicked lifestyle. You can't be talking about Peter the Rock. You can't not pass and be talking about the person that the church had been founded on. You mean tell me he was wicked? You mean tell me he was vulgar? You mean tell me he got a past like me? You mean tell me he wasn't squeaky clean? Oh, yeah, I'm talking about that Peter who the church was built on. Am I talking to anybody so far? By Peter's own omission, he was a sinful man. And if you don't believe me, read the book of Luke, the fifth chapter, at verse 8, 5 and 8. Luke, my God, he confesses that he's a sinful man. My God, I want to ask you a question tonight. Do you remember where you were when the Lord found you? My God, I was thinking about that today in intercessory prayer. And I just begin to thank God, my God, for where he found me from. I don't I know I was in a trash can. <laughs> I know I was in some abandoned houses, my God. I was know I was some places I shouldn't have been, but I thank God that he found me. See, some of y'all are ashamed at where he found you, but you ought to be giving God glory that he even found you. Because you could have died in that place, my God. Oh my God, have you when the last time you thought, thank God, and thought about where God found you? Oh my God, how long has it been since you looked to the rock? Oh my God, this same rock talking about Jesus. My God, when is the last time you really looked to the rock? My God, indeed, what the woman of God did, told us in prayer and really said, God, I thank you. Lord, I give you all of my worship. God, I know I ain't where I'm supposed to be, but I thank God I ain't what I used to be. Lord, I give you the glory. Somebody give God a hand in the church tonight, baby. Oh my God. Mm. Oh, sometimes you got to say, lie. Sometimes you got to come off the battlefield, everybody. Sometimes you got to just get ducked off, my God. And then you got to begin to squat down on life and begin to just thank God for his goodness. Thank God that you got food. Thank God that you got cold. Thank God that you didn't die last night. Thank God you didn't get that call about your children last night. See, you got to learn how to thank God. And oh, my God. And you will stop thanking God when you forget where you come from. You will stop thanking God when you forget what God has done for you in your life. Do I get anybody that's thankful? For what the Oh, they petty cakey. I want to talk to some people that thank God. Mm. Hey, my God. Oh, my God. The word of God says you got to look to the, to, to the rock from which you was cut. Right down Isaiah 51 1. My God, look to the rock from which you was cut. Don't forget where you come from. Oh, my God. When you forget where you come from, you start losing your evidence. <laughs> when you forget where you come from, you start falling from a distance. <laughs> when you forget what he did for you, then you tell yourself, I don't have to read today. I read next week. <laughs> when you forget where you come from and what it used to be like, come on, somebody. Oh, my God. You'll start doing things that you used to didn't do. Oh, my God. When you forget where you come from, my God, 
God. That what is up under you is now back on top of you. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there because you have forgot. This Peter, though, uh, who the church is built on, had a past. He was wicked. He was vulgar. He, he was vulgar. He was like me. He was out of order. He had a sinful past. He'd been through some things in life. Oh, you mean to tell me that pastor going to talk about that? I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, yes, yes, yeah. Uh, do anybody got a sinful past? Huh? Do anybody, have anybody ever been wicked before? Have anybody been vulgar before? Have you ever been said you ain't nothing but a devil? Come on, somebody. Uh, okay, okay, okay. Um, Peter had a past. But let's look at what happened when you've been transformed. When you've been crossed over. Oh, my God, when you go from the left to the right and right to the left. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, when God has done something on the inside. When you had a head-on collision with the king of kings and the lords of lords, my God. Things begin to happen when you remember what you used to be. When you remember how he did it. When you remember how he turned it around. When he remember how he shook it up. When should have took you out, counted you in, baby. Oh, when they wrote you off, God wrote you in, baby. Uh, the, this would have happened. When, when you got evidence in your life, see, you, you begin to do this. <laughs> oh, my God. When you tasted the goodness of the Lord, you will do this right here when I'm going to teach you right now. Oh, who am I talking to in the church? So Peter, though he had a past, his past led him to do this. Write this down. He had a profession. Let's go. I'm going to teach you tonight, baby. Yeah, yeah. You got to start a church back up and get y'all back focused. We got major warfare to do over here, baby. He had his profession. Let's look at this right here. When Peter bowed before Jesus on that fishing boat, oh, my God, he, he called out capital L-O-R-D. Luke 5, and they said, Simon Peter, when he saw it, when he saw it, are you looking? When he saw it, if you don't know what he saw, I'm going to teach you. What you looking at? What you looking for? What pastor teach y'all on Easter? Are you looking for God in dead places? Are you looking for relationships? My God is supposed to die. Are you looking for it to live? What you looking at, baby? Mm. Oh, my God. Oh, he, he saw what God did, and the Bible says that he fell to his feet. I mean, to his knees before Jesus. See, 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 when you got a past, when you know you're self-righteous like I do, it's filthy rags. When you know you ain't fit to live, but you ain't ready to die. When you're grateful, my God. Oh, my God, it'll bring you to your knees. It'll make you stand up and worship. It'll make you lay out. Oh, my God, you, oh, my God, you'll get up at your pew, and you'll make your way to the pool pit and say, Lord, here am I. Save me, my God. When you're grateful, my God, that he gave you another chance. When you're grateful, my God, that he gave you a beautiful why? When you're grateful, down down, that He bless you with a dying peace, my God. It'll make you stand up and say, "God, I give you the glory." Oh, Madeline, when He saved your children. Oh, when He restored your health, my God. It'll make you get up and bow down in His presence, my God. How can you not bow down to a holy God that's been so good to you, like Jesus has been good to you and I? Oh my God, Peter said, Peter said, Peter said, Master. Oh, I told y'all, L-O-R, capital. And then he said, master. So you didn't call nobody master unless you was in submission to that person. When you mention the word master in the Jewish culture, culture that means you're giving this person or that thing supreme. Oh, many of us got many masters, but we got the wrong master. Peter was, had his focus on the right man. Even though he had a past, even though he denied him, when he encountered him, he bowed down. See, when you bow down, God gets you back in alignment. When you bow down and submit, my God, he realigns you. When you say, okay, God, I tried my way, but it's now it's time for your way again. He'll come back and realign you. Oh, my God, when you walk away, my God, he'll walk in and then he'll transform you again. Come on, somebody. And so Peter said, Master, Peter recognized, Peter recognized, Peter recognized that, uh, you know, I'm saved. I've been through some things. I've seen some things. I didn't see you do some things. But look what he said. Even though I'm Peter and the churches are built upon me, look what he said, baby. He said, I'm a sinner. See, he ain't forgot. You can always tell when somebody forgot. <laughs> Uh, you can always tell because their passion and their pursuit shift. <laughs> oh, my God. Things that, my God, used to be important is no longer important to them. Coming to the house of the Lord and sitting with their sisters and brothers is no longer important. Coming to man's meeting no longer important. Posting about Christ is no longer important. Things that used to matter don't matter no more. You can always tell mm, when he's no longer master. 
You can always tell, my God, when somebody understands that their self-righteousness is a filthy rag because they ain't got no problem with sharing their lows before they share their highs. Because, see, when you show your lows, you, get, you invite people into your space to say, okay, I can identify with him. I can identify with her because she's been through some stuff like I've been through some stuff. She ain't squeaky clean. He ain't squeaky clean. And so now I got interest uh, into their life. Mm. That's why you got to show your wounds before you. I said you got to show your wounds so somebody else can believe. Quit telling everybody about all the good things. Tell them about your past like your pastor do. Uh, that draws you in. That's why you're following God, isn't it? Because you know I've been through some things in life and I've been delivered from a lot of stuff. Mm, Peter said, I'm a sinner though. And I, he said, I can't handle this holiness. Uh, leave me to myself, Peter said. I'm a sinner and I can't handle this. Leave me to myself. Mm. Oh my God, the closer you get to God, the more you see how unworthy you are. Mm, mm, mm. When they pulled in the catch, the fish, that's why he bowed down, because Peter had fished all night, and Jesus came and showed him, throw it on the other side. Peter said, God, I've been fishing all night. I'm a fisherman by trade. How you going to tell me what to do when this is what I've been doing <laughs> all my life? Jesus said, just throw it to the other side. So Peter said, but if you say so. See, some of y'all need to say, but Lord, if you say so. <laughs> uh, I know I think I got it figured out. <laughs> and I know I have some success in what I'm doing, but, you know, I ain't been having no success lately. I ain't been producing no fruit lately. Oh, my God, I really don't want to do it my way, but, but because you are my master <laughs> and because you are my Lord <laughs> and not only that, my Savior, if you say so. Mm. Oh, my God. Sometimes you got to say, I'm going to do it because you said so. I don't want to do it, but I'm going to do it because you say so. I'm like, if I really trust you, I know your will is better than my will. I might not understand it all, but you know what's going on. Come on, somebody. Uh, but if you say so. Look at your neighbor and say, but if you say so. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> if you say so, my God. Oh, my God. And when he pulled in the fish, he was overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed. He was overwhelmed. Because the catch. He had to have help. Come on, son. When God bless you, the Bible says that, that James and John, sons of Zebedee, Zebedee's sons, co-workers and stuff with Simon. See, see, Simon was trying to do it by himself. I'm going somewhere, I promise you. Oh, my God. He was trying to fish by himself because, again, that's what they was accustomed to doing. That's what God allowed them to do for a season. Y'all didn't catch that. They were fishermen by trade, but God allowed them to do that for a season until they had that strategic moment. And God shifted their occupation. My God, now you're fishing for fish. Now I'm going to let you fish for people. Yeah. Woo, my God. But when God bless you, you need a little help. <laughs> oh, my God, when you do it God's way, if you say so, you, know, you, you can't bring in the blessings by yourself. Your neck ain't strong enough. You ain't got enough muscles, my God. So you got to summon some more people to come help you carry your blessings, my God, like Peter had to do. He was so blessed with fish, he had to get other two other people. Two, uh-oh, two. Now I went from one to two. Father, Son, Holy Ghost, Peter, James, and John. So you need somebody to help you do what God called you to do, baby. When God bless you, my God, you need some help to bring it in. Oh, my God, I just recognized there was you, son. Hallelujah. My God, she kid obo shanda. Mm. Ah. Hallelujah. Somebody give God a hand for me, please, 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 please. Oh, my God. Mm. Mm. I'm reminded, Pastor, what you talked about Monday. I just shifted now. I'm reminded what you talked about Monday. We was reading the one-year Bible on Monday when you said God opened up their eyes so that they can see. Now, I've been up here worshiping, and I've been up here giving announcements, and I've been up here preaching the gospel, and I didn't look three or four times, but then God just opened up my eyes, Trayvon, so that I can see. Come on, somebody. Oh, my God, you sitting right here. I can't get nobody to say nothing right there. Hey, Oh, 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 let me clean it up. So you mean to tell me, oh, baby, I'm heavy loaded. You mean to tell me that I could be looking at the young man of God and still not see him? I just showed y'all how God's hidden for a season and then just opened up my eyes so I can recognize who he is. So sometimes your pastor might not see you, though you're looking right at me because I'm in another level. I'm in another place, baby. So quick get offended if I walk past you because I didn't see you, baby. I ain't got time for that chicken stuff. I looked at him and didn't know who he was until God, by the Spirit, opened up my eyes so I could see who he is. I just told you something. So quit getting offended and grow up when somebody see you, but they don't see you. Mm. Everybody, she can't allow my son die. 
Oh, my God. Peter professed. Peter professed. He had a past, and then when he encountered God, because he said, if you say so, it brought about a profession. Write this down. See, I'm moving. Oh, now we got some proof that you've been transformed. Now we got some evidence. Ah, uh, Madeline. Now we got some evidence. And he started with a past, though. Then he had an encounter, which brought him to his knees, shift his words from, 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 from just Savior. See, for a lot, a lot of people, he's just Savior. Uh, he went from a past to, to, uh, to, to for him moving from Savior to, to Master and Lord, so he changed up his verbiage, and now he got some proof in his life. Do you got some proof? Look at your name and say, is there any proof? Is there any evidence? Come on, somebody. There were times when Peter excelled. Watch now, let me teach you. Let me teach you. There were some times when Peter excelled in his walk with the Lord. Peter had sought to defend the Lord, watch this, using a sword. Peter cut off the earth. Peter was a real one. That's why I tell y'all, Brother Stacy, my God, were no weak disciples in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, there were some real ones back in the Bible days. Quit thinking that we were soft. Quit thinking that they were soft. Quit thinking that they just let people run over them. Oh, you mess with Jesus, you get your head cut off. Uh, he'll put it back on. You never know he cut it off. Mm. The Bible says that Peter cut the dude's ear off. Watch this. Even after they arrested Jesus, Watch this. When all the other disciples had fled away, Peter followed him closely for a season. Uh-oh. Everybody else had fled because now here they come to arrest Jesus. And so they come up there tripping with Jesus. So Peter took the sword and cut his ear off. And God said, perfect, you live by the sword, you die by it. God picked his ear up and put it back on. Ooh. God was showing who he was in the flesh right then. Who picks up an ear and put it back on. And there ain't no residue when he put it back there. You can hear it just like, matter of fact, better than the other earth. Ooh, somebody give God a hand. Because when God puts you back together, you better than what you was when you. I'm way better than what I used to be, I promise you. Oh my God, when God puts you back together, you're much better than what you was when you came to him. Thank you for that revelation, God. Thank you for that revelation, God. But Peter followed him closely when everybody else abandoned him. When they came, Peter stood up like a real and said, if you touch him, you got to touch me. My God, even all that, even with all that, Peter had mistakes. Are y'all with me so far? Peter had real fruit in his life. Question, do you have evidence in your life? Write that down, please, because you need to take an inventory like I have to do. Do you have any evidence? I ain't talking about quoting scripture. I thank God that you're even sitting here tonight. I thank God for all my listeners, but do you got any evidence? Is there any proof, my God, that you've been with Jesus? Is there any proof that you followed him closely? Is it any proof that he's master? Is it any proof that he's Lord? Because when he's master and he's Lord, you walk different. Mm. Oh, you'll have to, you'll let it go, my God. You'll remove stuff. You'll forgive, my God. You'll try to get it right even though you stumble along the way. My God, you just ain't going to wallow in sin. You just ain't going to keep talking about God know my heart when he's master and when he's Lord in your life. Is there any evidence? <laughs> oh, my God. Is there any proof in your life? Are you with me so far? But there are three basic types of fruit. Let me give these to y'all. Uh, that the Lord, keyword capital L, I'm emphasizing that, that the Lord develops mm, for my note takers and his children. Oh, I told the men of God last night, I mean Monday night, uh, we all the people of God, but everybody ain't the children. I want to talk to the children of God tonight. And if you're not a child of God, you don't have an opportunity to become one tonight. Your choice. It's fooling her tonight. And so I don't know who's saved and who ain't saved. That ain't my job. That's God's business. But when you have an opportunity, come become a children of God. Come and become a children of God. A child of God. Are y'all with me so far? Come on, somebody give God a hand. Come on, come on, come on. You may be saved. You may just like be like Peter, but you just stumbled like I have. You done made mistakes like I have. And so therefore, you got to come back and get reconnected. You got to come back and get your will submitted. You got to come back and make your master and Lord again. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's talking to those that's religious and think they don't need God. And they just started following yeah. from a distance, mm -hmm. hanging out with the enemy, justifying that it's okay. I'm trying to win them. I'm trying to win them. You ain't got no power to win them. You only get power when you stay connected, pass attention to the source. If you're disconnected from the source, you ain't got no power. You got a lot of tradition, a lot of Bible quoting with no power. 
Well, let's tweet basic things, though. Tweet the basic things, type of fruits that the Lord, that the Lord developed. It's all Bible, I promise you. I sought the Lord. It's all Bible. My God, one of them is my God. When God begins to develop you, my God, here is some of your proof. Write down sanctification. Uh-huh. Sanctify me, Lord. Created me a clean heart. Watch this. Sanctification means that is we become more like him. When God is sanctifying you, my God, you become more like him. Again, the title of the sermon is, is there any evidence? Uh, the, the second thing, my God, you become more spiritual. That is, we behave more like him. Mm -hmm. After you become, you behave. Oh, my God. And then the third thing, your soul consists of your mind, your will, and your emotions. Then you begin to love what God loves. The thing, my God, will become a burden to you, my God. And so you'll be sanctified. <laughs> you have a developed a level of spirituality, which causes you to behave more like the Lord. And then you have take on the burden of the Lord. Do, you, do the things of God matter to you like they matter to God? Are you concerned about somebody else other than your foe and no more? Yeah. Are you concerned about the lost person behind you, in front of you? Because we all lost to some degree. We all got something in us that need to be removed. Are uh, you concerned? How many of y'all been praying about all these different people that's walking around this neighborhood? And y'all know they sick, strung out, prostitution, drug addiction, homeless. Uh, have you started calling and asking God to bring them in, to bring you across the path? My God, what about that neighbor that's sitting on the other side of that cubicle? My God, what about you that's watching online? Are you praying for your lost loved ones? My God, are you praying for the people that you know that don't know Christ? My God, ask yourself, my God, what breaks God's heart? Bible, does it break your heart yet? You will know you're becoming more like Christ. You will know you're becoming like Christ, my God, and falling in love with Christ. What breaks his heart breaks your heart. If you don't feel the burden of somebody else that's suffering and dying on the vine, uh, I don't think that you have become and begin to behave like Christ. When you see your brothers and sisters sinking and it don't bother you, and you see they didn't shift it even on Facebook, you don't even take time to reach out to them and say, Sister, uh, your post is shifting. Huh? Your verbiage on Facebook has changed. Come on, somebody. I'm a little concerned about you, woman of God. I'm concerned about you, man of God. Oh, my God, when is your heart, my God, going to be concerned about God's heart? Right. That's when you know you've been sanctified. And you're becoming more spiritual because now you have the burden of the Lord. Mm -hmm. That means you're no longer concerned about your foe and no more. Mm, somebody give God a hand. Oh, my God. Am I helping anybody so far? But let's look at the problem, though. The past, the profession, the proof, but there's still a problem. Do anybody got a past? Let's deal with it. Write down the problem. In spite of all that Peter had, he still fell into sin. Peter, the church was founded and built upon the rock, but he fell into sin. He denied the Lord three times, y'all. Listen to this. He said, number one, I don't even know what you're talking about. Have you told somebody that recently? Girl, I tried this stuff. I don't care nothing about that stuff no more. Yeah, I used to work in the ministry. I don't care nothing about all that stuff no more. Yeah, I was excited, but I don't care about all that stuff, man. That old Jesus stuff, I, I'm really wondering if it's even legit. Uh, I used to work hard and go hard for God, but I don't care about all that stuff. I tried. It didn't work for me. I need to try something there. I'll pick it up later. You've been with him. No, I ain't. I don't know what you're talking about. You know you've been with him. No, I ain't, girl. Go on, get away from me. I don't know what you're talking about. I'm serious, y'all. My God, we do it every single day. I don't want to read your word no more. I ain't got time to pray. I'm mad at you, God, because you didn't do it. You let him get out of my life. You let her get out of my life. You didn't do what you said you was going to do. Somebody told me that I was going to do this, and now I'm not doing it. I, yeah, yeah. The church is full of that everywhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody above this sermon, starting with the pastor. Three things Peter did because he started following at a distance. Now, remember, when they came, baby, to arrest him, he cut off the person's ear. Come on, somebody. He stood up for God like a soldier. When you follow close, you think different, you operate different. But when you start following from a distance, now that what was important, no longer pleasure is important no more. That what you used to value, he used to value Jesus, but he no longer devalued. Oh, my God. He was willing to die for Jesus at once upon a time. 
But then when he started falling from a distance, when he shifted, or when he got full of himself, when he got arrogant and powerful, my God, and didn't want to listen to his covering, didn't want to submit, didn't want to be accountable, he started falling from a distance, and now the very man that he was willing to cut somebody's head off, he said, I don't even know him. That's how quick you can fall when you get full of yourself. And quit reading, and quit praying, and thinking that you, it don't matter that you come to church. It don't matter that you read. It don't matter that you pray. It don't matter that you strive for sanctification. It don't matter that you strive for holiness. Then you start backsliding. Yeah. That's tough. That's real. Somebody give God a hand. Somebody give God a hand. Mm. Let's look at the next thing he did. He said, I don't even know what you're talking about. The second thing he did, he said, I don't even know the man. Like I just demonstrated. He said, I don't even know the man. Oh, uh, that's the second thing. The third thing, Peter swore a curse. Listen to me, church. Uh, he swore a curse on my own life if I'm lying. He said, curse my own life if I'm lying. He was lying. The things we say, the things that we say we won't do, we will do. <laughs> oh, she just, uh, yeah, the things we say we won't do, we will do. Be careful, take heed. Be careful, take heed. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful when you become unteachable. Be careful when can't nobody tell you nothing. Be careful at least you think you stand and you end up falling. Be careful if you feel like you got it figured out and you're starting to fall from a distance. I'm trying to teach you. Be thankful, my God. I mean, be careful if you think, my God, that situation ain't mine. I ain't never done drugs. I ain't never slept with another man. I ain't, no, I ain't talking about that type of stuff. Be careful when you get puffed up. Be careful when you can't see no correction from your wife. Get careful. You're on dangerous ground. Who am I talking to in the church? Be careful when you come up under your covering. You don't listen. You're always arguing with your covering. Be careful. Just like I told y'all, when bitch's voice don't matter to me no more, I'm in trouble. When her voice don't matter to me, I'm in trouble. When my voice don't matter to you, you in trouble. When my voice don't matter to you, pastor, you in trouble. When the very one you're sleeping with in the bed that you're married to, when they voice don't matter, you in trouble. I said when you're married. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Somebody give God a hand. When you backslide, you are, you, are, you are call a curse down on your life. Peter said, I swear, he swore a curse on my life if I'm lying. Regardless, church, of the changes we have experienced through Jesus, it is still possible, y'all, for all of us. All of us. You and I, I and you, to fall back into sin. Not commit sin, fall into. That means that you... The, Commit, think about this, thank you Holy Ghost, fall into, that means you have jumped into it. Now it's called habitual, iniquity, something I won't stop doing. Even though I tell myself I want to try, I really don't try. Even though I come down and cry about it, and I do good for two days, that's okay. Don't feel no condemnation, that's not what I'm trying to accomplish in the spirit. I'm trying to get you and I to understand that if you don't guard your life, your evidence will be snuffed out. Peter had an opportunity to make a difference to those that said crucify him, but he failed. Jesus will put you in places, my God, where you can magnify him, but are you failing? Jesus will set you on jobs and, and bring people in your life so that you can, my God, magnify God, but are you failing? Mm. 1 Corinthians 10, 12, write that down. If you think you are standing strong, be careful, my God, that you do not fall. Thank you. Number two, let me move. I only got one more point. This is it. Transformation leads to a proper testimony. Every life of every redeemed, redeemed person is a living, walking sermon. That's it, that's it. That means the stuff that you tell yourself it don't matter, it do matter. Your yard not being cut, and everybody else's yard is cut, but they, they see you get in your car on Sundays and Wednesdays and come to Bible study, but you got the raggedy yard on the block, you're speaking. 
you're preaching. You might not got a microphone, but your life is preaching. Whatever is left unattended turns to chaos. So your life is a sermon. How your children look when you bring them to church is a sermon. How we, how we, thank you Holy Ghost, discipline our children in front of people is a sermon. How we talk to our children in front of people is a sermon. What we let our children get away with in front of people and then crucify somebody else's kid for it is a sermon. The title of the sermon is, is there any evidence in your life? So our lives are and is a sermon. When you decide that you don't want to be identified with God no more, you just abandon your post in the ministry that you said God told you, you just spoke and read a sermon. So you're teaching those that's watching, you're looking up to you that anytime you get frustrated, just quit. Just quit on God anytime you get frustrated. Tell God it don't matter. First lady and pastor don't matter. You don't matter. Just quit. You send the wrong message. Lifestyle at this church, I don't know about nobody else, still matters. Your life either says, Jesus saved me and radically changed my life, or your life says, yeah, I'm a believer, but Jesus hadn't changed my life. Think about that. Your life either is showing, showing that you've been transformed. Are you saying, yeah, I'm saved, I'm a believer, but there ain't no evidence. Which one is it tonight? Oh, I got a radical change life. I'm at church, but I'm, I'm just saying. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Which one is it? Which one is it, Lawrence Peoples? Which one is it, Taylor Josh? Which one is it, Francesca? Which one is it, Madeline? Which one is it, Michelle? Which one is it, Sharon? Which one is it, Naila? Which one is it, Pleasure? Uh, is my life showing that I've been radically transformed out of head to head on collision with God? I do a show that I don't even believe, even though I'm at church all the time. Evidence, evidence, evidence is absolutely the one thing that's going to be necessary when you stand before God. The Bible says that when the books is open, that's the evidence. Do you got enough evidence? Kingdom citizens, kings and queens, joint heirs, masterpieces that you are, do you got the evidence? Them is all words that God afforded to children of God. But is there any evidence that you're a masterpiece? Are you operating like a joint heir? Are you functioning at a high level? Is your standards higher As your standards low. Evidence. The higher the standards, the more evidence you'll see. The lower the standards, the more you won't look like him. Nor would you behave like him. And nor when you talk like him when the squeeze is on you. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for pastoring the people. Write this down right quick. Up under point number one. Let's look at this testimony. We're going to get you out of here. Peter, because he chose to follow at a distance, was in the wrong place. Are you sitting in the wrong place when you leave going home for Christ Church tonight? Peter followed Jesus, but he did not go all the way with Jesus. Like some of us tonight, you follow him, but you ain't going all the way. I'm not trying to belittle nobody. I'm trying to stir you up to move closer. You started out close. Y'all look at me. I don't want to answer. I don't love her no more. Mm -hmm. I don't cut nothing about my body. Forgive who? What, man? Please. That stuff don't. How do you even know that's real? We Israelites. <laughs> I know I did. I'm in the spirit. I'm not playing up with a woman of God. <laughs> wrong place. When you start talking like that, you'll be in the wrong place. You won't go all the way with them. You'll backslide on them. You'll stay outside warming yourself around the enemy's fire. Whew, 
Holy Ghost, help me. When you follow from a distance, you end up in the wrong place. Around the enemy's fire. Scripture, be careful, a strange fire. <laughs> Read your Bible. You can't offer God strange fire. You can't offer God broken, contaminated, sinful worship. God, clean my heart up. Forgive me for my sins. Now receive my worship. Can't just give God anything. A strange fire. He killed them in the Old Testament when they offered strange fire. Can't give God that type of mess. They don't teach that in the body of Christ, pastors. You can't just give God any type of worship. You can't give God anything. You can't, don't you know the Bible says even your money, when you come around and it's not giving out a cheerful heart and it's not giving out obedience, the Bible says he blew it away. Hey, guy. When you don't honor God, you curse your own life. God don't curse you, you curse you. Your decisions. God got to honor your decisions, church. I'm teaching you. I'm not here. I'm teaching you. God will honor your own decisions. So if you want to be blessed, do it right. Sow it right. Give it right. Love right. Forgive right. Follow right. Come up close. Quit following from a distance. Quit making excuses. Let it go. Remove. All the stuff I be teaching you, my God, so you can be blessed, my God, and highly favored. Mm, 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 mm. There are some places that a believer, watch this, should never go. So be careful where you go. People are watching. There's some places that a believer should never go. Everything is permissible, but everything ain't beneficial. We got to watch becoming stumbling blocks. Is there any evidence? Don't try to justify and say, but I'm here because I'm trying to win her. I let him come over because I want him to come get around you, Pastor Peter, because I know you go hard. The devil is a lie. Pastor, the people. Number two, up under that, up under testimony. When you find yourself out of position, pretty much backsliding, falling from a distance, now you're in the wrong place, and now you're with the wrong people. Let's go a little deeper. That night, Peter associated with the wrong crowd, y'all. And it wasn't long until he was acting just like them. Be careful who you're hanging around. Because if you ain't been in his presence, thank you, Holy Ghost. And you ain't been spending no time with the Lord, so you ain't got enough power. Yeah. See what I'm trying to say? So therefore, that which you, you're supposed to be affecting them, but they didn't start affecting you. And sometimes it shows up quickly, and other times it shows up slowly. Yeah. And so, my God, you be with the wrong people, my God, because you to convince yourself that you ready, or you convince yourself that you have the power, or you convince yourself that you good, and before you know it, you're doing the same thing they're doing now. And now, you ain't got no evidence. Mm -hmm. Peter's with the wrong crowd. It wasn't long before he became just like them. They denied him. What do you, what do you mean? He, he started acting like them. They said crucify. Peter didn't say crucify. Y'all stay with me, church. I'm going to get you out. He didn't say crucify, Mike, but he said, I don't know him. You might as well say crucify. I don't know nothing about him. Curse me. Kill me, God. I don't know nothing about him. My God. Kill me if I'm lying. You might as well say crucify. You start acting like the God, people you hang around. God, God. Light cannot mix with darkness. Oh Righteousness don't go with unrighteousness. Holiness don't mix with unholiness. It's Bible. They don't preach it, but it's Bible. Yeah. Quit telling yourself, my God, you can do anything and go anywhere and be around anybody. You can't separate. That's called sanctification. Be ye separate, the Bible says. Be ye holy, for I am holy, God says. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for a reverence for your word and your will. Mm. He started acting just like them. We must exercise, church, great caution when it comes to the people we associate with. Love everybody. Be led when you go around people that you know that's very wicked and sinful. Not that you better, not that you judge it, but you better make sure you're strong enough to help them. When you start messing around with demons, them demons will say, Paul, I know, Jesus, I know, but who are you? And them demons will jump out on you. That's why I said you got to be led. Associate with people. I'm not telling you to disassociate yourself and exalt yourself and think you better than somebody. That's not what the Bible is talking about, and that's not the context I'm preaching in. But be led and make sure that God led you. Because if God led you, he has qualified you to be able to witness in that person's life. Mm, mm, mm. 
I don't know how many people I know that started out, my God, uh, at the altar praying for something. That's why I got men with men and women with women. And for you know what, I need to talk to you about my problems in my marriage. Uh, my God, you can help my husband. <laughs> Notice I'm saying you can. I'm talking like a female. Uh, she didn't reach out and scooped over his wife. Now she didn't talk to him. I need to help you with my, you can help my husband. And so now I'm talking to you every day about my problems. Uh -huh. That's called soul ties being developed. Uh, uh. But I'm doing the right thing. I'm trying to be a witness. I'm letting God use me. I'm showing evidence. I'm inviting them to church. That ain't just for women. That's for men too. Be careful. Be careful. Quickly. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 15, 33, write it down. Bad company corrupts good character. It's real simple. And my last one. Wrong place, wrong people, and we give the wrong performance. And I'm done. The Bible tells us that Peter began to swear, y'all. He certainly did not look or sound. Write those two words down. Look. I sound like a believer at this specific time and at this specific moment. There's times in your life and my life where we don't have the evidence, where we don't look nor sound like Jesus. All we got to do <laughs> is go to the crib. <laughs> and when it's set off, <laughs> there it is. Oh, yeah, y'all missed that. We don't look or sound like a believer at the time. What does your life say about Jesus, everybody, as I come bring it in? What does our life, your life, my life, say about Jesus? If a person followed you everywhere, you went and watched all day, watched all, all you did all day for 24 hours, would they conclude that you were a pagan or a Christian? Think about it. If they watch your TV show, Empire would tell if he's, if it's master on a Wednesday, or Jesus is master on a Wednesday. I went to church last Wednesday. My favorite show just started back up, and they moved, used to be on Tuesday. Dang, now it's on Wednesday. Now I got to pick and choose when I come to church. Now I got to pick and choose. I don't even know him. I don't even know him. Enemy is cunning and crafty. Shifted from Tuesday to Wednesday to disrupt it. And God trying to show you, see, you thought you were somewhere, but you ain't. How quickly you abandoned me for a TV show. But when the squeeze comes, you're going to run to the church and say, Pastor Michelle, Pastor Francetta, Pastor Madeline, Pastor Chem, help me. Pastor Tedrick, help me. She didn't try, yeah, but you've been gone. You didn't want no accountability. You made the TV show long. Now you done lost your job, and now you want the church to pay for your stuff. See, now you out of order. See, that's how the enemy work. I love you. That's why the Spirit of God allowed me to pastor you the way I do, church. Mm. Your TV shows and the movies. Oh, oh. I'm glad we had a raggedy TV in Cancun. It didn't work. It was too little. It worked, but it was too little. And it was all in Spanish. I couldn't speak. I couldn't even live. watch the... Uh, See, then if God had me now, thank you, Holy Ghost. He covered me so I couldn't watch nothing with my dad. I went, ah. Oh, Pastor, let me get y'all out of here. Mm. If they look at your TV shows and your movies, mm. if they listen, uh oh, I didn't walk up to many of y'all cars and you soon you turn it on. Yeah, uh oh, Pastor, hold on. Turn. Watch your music, all I'm trying to say, because I love you. Watch your music, watch your music, because you remember, my God, everything about you and I is a sermon. Watch your music. If you have been sanctified and you become in like and you have a burden for the things of God, all that worldly stuff should vex you sooner or later. If you can stand to listen to that stuff consistently for long periods of time, be careful because you might be dead, dying. You used to couldn't stand it, now you can tolerate it. Stuff that you used to couldn't tolerate, now you find yourself tolerating. Be careful. You didn't get bit by a python, and the devil is sucking the life out of you. If you can sit up off there and listen to all that stuff, and, and you can go to the club, you go out to all these old parties and all these old stuff all around the cities, and Oklahoma City, listen to all that old mess. You should have seen how Christians acted 
when that boy got killed. He became God overnight. And all kind of people's lives, all on Facebook, all on social. That quick, uh, we talk about the children of Israel leaving God. That quick, that boy, whatever his name was, got, got killed, became God. Nipsey became God. Shirts every day. They ain't never wore nobody's shirt. You won't wear Jesus' shirt, but you wore his shirt. You won't tell nobody about Jesus, but you'll post about Nipsey. Like the lost your man behind him. He ain't never done nothing for you. Oh, I'm sorry, online lookers. I just preached the gospel. Going hard for Christ, 205 South Sheridan, 11 o'clock, baby. I can't get nobody to say nothing like that. I'm going to quit right there. Thank you, Holy Ghost. As I bring this thing to a close. Thank you, Holy Ghost. There's more to it, but I'm going to quit right there. I just believe the Spirit of God has released me to release the people. She ke da la la ba shanda. She ke da la la bo shanda. Is there any evidence in your life? Can people see Jesus in you? If he really is there, then people should be able to see him. And there should be evidence.